Figma sites just got announced, a tool by Figma to replace Framer, Lovable, potentially even Webflow. So far you would use Figma to design something and then hand it off to a developer to build it somewhere else. That is changing today. By introducing this new tool, you can continue your design inside of Figma and then build them with code and publish it even live. We'll check out the tool and then I'll show you a few websites published by Figma, we'll review them and see how good they are. Before we start, the chances are you might not know me. In the past six years, I've been building websites for high ticket clients such as Adidas, Siemens, small startups, big startups, and I've been using Webflow for all of this. Not because they are paying me to do so, I'm actually a paying customer to Webflow. I'm doing this because I genuinely think Webflow is the best visual builder out there. I'm saying this to say that I'm holding Figma sites up to a high standard and I'm looking forward to another tool that could potentially do the job faster, cheaper or whatever. So competition is good. I'm using Webflow as of now. So with all of that being said, let's get into this. All right, so here's how it works. You design inside of Figma as always then you can literally copy your design, hopefully with auto layouts inside it, and then you can paste it into Figma sites. Once you do this, you have the desktop version and then you can add new breakpoints such as tablet and mobile. There's a custom one, they didn't show it in the keynote. I really want to test this out. I'm dying to test this out. The tool is not available yet, but when it is available, I will test it and I will make a video on this. So to continue, you make these breakpoints and then you can edit content across them. So if you change something here, it will change everywhere. What I'm really interested in how the cascading works, because typically it goes from like big screen to small screen. I'm not sure how they handle this. If what if you change an image in the small one, does it change on the bigger one? We don't know, we'll test it out. But changing content should change change it everywhere but changing styles should be uh, cascading down and not up would be interesting to know if there is a way to do mobile first as well once you're done with changing content you can actually add interactions and this is where it gets interesting potentially even a bit disappointing you can add a lot of interactions as you see, we can like change stuff. It seems like scroll animations, hover animations. What is really interesting is this conditional one, like conditional animations. Yes, please. Uh, we have some like marquee. So a lot of them are like pre-made animations. This It's interesting that there are like a lot of them, but it's disappointing that it's, you know, it seems like you cannot make something super custom because it's a lot of like pre-made ones. Anyway, they showed how you can add these. Um, something like this opens up and it, this looks like crazy like Framer. And then you can obviously add easings and even have custom easing. These are things that I actually use, but they didn't show. So this is another thing I want to show uh, and check out. Then you can preview your designs before like publishing. What is really interesting, they mentioned that this window you see here, this is not a, like a Figma preview, it is an actual like HTML CSS preview that you see here, so that is very interesting. Um, they didn't show a lot, but an animation, and then here are some draggable animations. Again, these seem really cool, like spin, lightbox, draggable, mouse parallax, these are cool, but again, not super custom, just some pre-made animations. Anyway, once you are done with animations, you can publish your website to your custom domain, make it live for the web. Super exciting, but we don't know anything about pricing, hosting limitations, nothing yet. They just said they will announce it by the end of the year, I believe. Uh, but for now, we have a few examples to look into, a few websites built with this tool. We'll get into this in a second, but before that, they showed us another thing that is not available yet. It won't be available until later in the year, and that is the CMS part. So with this, which looks crazy like Framer CMS to me, uh, you will be able to make 
uh, dynamic content, obviously, like a blog, and then render everything inside of Figma. Um, they showed a, a preview. It looks like really like a really simple setup. This is something that I really dislike about Webflow CMS, that the setup takes quite some time. It's really powerful. You can do a lot, but with that comes the time consuming part that you connect everything. And here it looked very automatic almost. So this looks very simple to use, but it's also very simple. What if you need a more complex component? What if you want to build something very custom? Figma has an answer to this. Figma Make, it's a tool to vibe code. You add a prompt, you add your design and it codes it out for you. Where it gets really interesting is that you can vibe code a component and build it and then bring it back to your Figma site. This is very promising. Let's see how well it works, but I'm super excited to try it out. What's really interesting here is that Figma is trying to own the entire process. So I actually showed this in my last video, how we go about the process of creating for the web. We get an idea and you do this inside of Figma. You just scramble something and then you do development, which is nowadays vibe coding. You test something out very quickly. It's not high quality and it's not good design. And then you do the design because you want to test things out and then clean up. And now you can do all of this inside of Figma and then even potentially publish. We'll see about this because now we have to review a few websites made with Figma sites and see their quality. So let's start off with this one. And honestly, I don't know even why they have included this. This doesn't look very presentable. It's not much of a site. And look at this menu. Things just jump. It looks like the menu is not the same component. There are alignment issues here. And this is not the worst one. It gets worse. Like here we have this example. The layout is more complex. Um, but look at this button. This one is fine, but this one is broken. I know it's beta, but these are literally templates by Figma. And spotting these issues shouldn't be that hard. Again, it gets worse. Here we have this one, much better design. And look, look at this animation. It's pretty nice, actually, to be fair. Here we have the slider that doesn't work. Like if I refresh the page, also the refresh is a bit rough, but yeah, the slider is very buggy, doesn't work. How do you add a slider, set it as a template, but it doesn't work? For this one, let's go a little bit deeper. So if we refresh, we see this nice animation, but do you see the logos here? You see how they jump? The animation just jumps. That's not great. Here, this arrow, like it, the animation here is also not great either. But again, let's, let's look at the worst part, which is the code the spaghetti code that we have here. Let's check out this footer and these links essentially. So here we have these links if I find them. First of all, they should be a list. It's not a must, but it's nicer if they are a list. It doesn't, It I couldn't find any list tag anywhere. Um, and look at these div blocks. It seems like we have seven div blocks just for this row. It's just crazy. We don't need so many div blocks and the the amount of div blocks is crazy. This is not the worst part. You know where the worst part is? Look at this. If we look at the headings, there is literally no heading. H1 to H6, there is absolutely no heading. Something that they probably will add. They must add this. This is very important but without headings, like there is no way you can build any like actually like functional website. It's, it's just very important for SEO. Like that's how Google and nowadays even, um, uh, AI tools read your website by, by looking at your document outline and understanding the, the whole, uh, HTML structure and the HTML structure here is very rough. So essentially the code is very bad quality but I give them that it's very early, it's beta. They probably will add a bunch of tools. I'm still excited about this because I personally spent quite a lot of my time inside of Figma as well as Webflow. 
I do a lot of planning in Figma. I do a lot of like, even if it's just a screenshot and doing something with it, um, sharing it with the team. It's a very collaborative uh, place and I have a team and it's like amazing. Like we, we use it for so many things other than just designing websites. So I'm genuinely uh, excited about all the tools that they mentioned and I'm looking forward to test them. So you're probably wondering, do I see myself switching to this tool to use it for client work? And the answer to my own surprise is probably yes, I do see a huge value that this could potentially bring. The idea that I can ask my designer to do something creative, take that design, develop it, even hand it to another developer to build on top of it and do all of this collaboratively in one environment. That is the dream, right? But we're pretty far from that dream. From what I see, the code output is not there. The seamlessness is not there. The consistency with AI, with every other tool as well is not there. But um, what we sure about is that I will get my hands on it, I will try it, and I will make videos on it. So if you're interested in knowing more about it, please consider subscribing and thank you so much for watching. I will be in the comments uh, chatting with you and until the next video, peace out.